Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and today I am going to be counting down my top 10 personal least favorite coasters. So these are only coasters that I have ridden. There will not be any coasters on here that I have not ridden before because I have not gotten a chance to experience them. Um, just keep that in mind as well. These are my opinions. I am in no way saying that you have to agree with me or that you should agree with me. You should go out there, ride these coasters and make your own opinion. However, let's get right into the video. So we're already starting out somewhat controversially here at number 10, which are SNS 4D free spins. Now I do know that some people tend to enjoy these roller coasters and they say that you can get um, a unique ride every time. And I do agree with that. You can get a unique ride every time. You will not have the same experience every time you ride these coasters. However, um, with all of my rides on the few that I've ridden, they all seem to be pretty awkward uh, transitions and experiences. Even when I am having a lot of flips and stuff, it's just not comfortable for me. Um, I end up smacking my head on the back of the restraint and um, it's not a lot of fun for me. Um, I just don't find them enjoyable. I've never ridden a Zag Spin, so maybe those are better. Um, obviously, Green Lantern was not, but um, some of those in Europe and whatnot. But um, yeah, number 10, we have SNS 40 Free Spins. All right, so next up at number nine, we have Gotham City Gauntlet Escape from Arkham Asylum at Six Flags New England. Now, typically with clones or coasters of the same model like Wild Mouse Coasters, um, I would group them all into one, except I tend to like most Wild Mouse Coasters that I ride. Um, however, this one specifically was just horrible. I don't know if it was the day I rode it or if... Six Flags New England just doesn't keep it up very well, but it was extremely rickety. It was rough on the track. The transitions were horrible. Um, it was undesirable laterals, whereas normal Wild Mouse Coasters have desirable laterals. And it just overall was just a really bad experience, and I did not enjoy my time on this coaster. Also, as a side note, what a horrible name for a coaster. It's so long and annoying. This is why it's coming in at number nine. So I'm sure that this one is really going to stir some controversy because I know that this is a very unpopular opinion. However, coming in at number eight, I have Adventure Express at Kings Island. Yes, I'm talking about v Adventure Express, the Arrow Mine Train at Kings Island. A lot of people love this coaster. Um, however, I have ridden it a few times that I've been to Kings Island, and um, I just must never get a good ride on it. I've tried multiple different spots, and I always find it to be uh, pretty rough, even for an Arrow. Um, I get a headache after it usually, and typically I don't. Um, so I just... Haven't had the best experiences on this coaster. I will give it another try the next time I'm at Kings Island, and I continue to do that. But it really hasn't helped this coaster at all. I just tend to not enjoy it uh, overall. I do think that the theming is cool, especially on that lift at the end. I just wish that they still had the you know the movie theme that Paramount had. But obviously, you can't help that. That's not hurting the coaster at all, in my opinion. Um, I just didn't enjoy my rides on it, and I thought it was kind of rough. So that's why it comes in at number eight. All right, so next up here at number seven, we have Wild Beast at Canada's Wonderland. Now, this coaster I went into with low expectations already because people had talked about how the Canada's Wonderland woodies um, really weren't good coasters, but um, I really wasn't expecting it to be as bad as it ended up being. So um, it really had no airtime at all. It was pretty forceless. None of the hills provided any airtime. I really didn't move from my seat at all. That's something I'm usually looking for on wooden coasters, and that didn't deliver anything. Um, also, when it goes up on its big banked turns, or not even really banked turns, on their just big turnarounds, um, it goes really slow and nothing really happens and it's just kind of a boring ride. And on top of that, when you go down, um, after those turnarounds, it can get kind of rough. Um, it wasn't terribly rough, but it was mostly boring and forceless. And so I think that wild beast would be a great candidate for maybe RMC to get its hands on if they can figure out that, um, in Canada and everything. Um, but yeah, I think wild beast, um, should get an RMC treatment, not because it's too rough, but because it's pretty boring. Um, and that's why it comes in at my number seven spot. 
So coming in at number six is another group or type of coaster that gets cloned a lot. It's the Vacoma Boomerang. And when I'm talking about Boomerang, I'm talking specifically about the classic style where you're in a sit-down train and um, you do all that. I'm not talking about the uh, giant inverted Boomerangs. I'm not talking about inverted Boomerangs. Um, this is specifically the um, traditional style Boomerangs. And these aren't really horrible, horrible coasters. Like, they don't kill you or anything like that. Um, I just really find it... Um, I find it annoying that they tend to be all over the place and you can ride them kind of nowhere, mat no matter where you live. Um, they're just kind of everywhere. Um, and they never provide a fun experience. Like clones like Batman the Ride are understandable and okay because you at least have a fun ride on them and they're really good coasters. But boomerangs are just mediocre at best, not very fun at all. Um, some of them can be really, really rough, like Flashback at Six Flags New England is horrible. The only Vacoma Boomerang that I've really enjoyed is Sidewinder at Hershey Park. But other than that, I really don't enjoy them, and I just try to get them out of the way as quick as possible when I'm at a park. So that's why they're coming in at number six. The number five spot goes to a classic coaster that I respect, um, Corkscrew at Cedar Point. I understand the history behind this coaster and how it should be respected and um, kept alive because it was one of the first um, inverting coasters um, out there. However, it has not aged well. It does not hold up well today. Um, it is my least favorite coaster at Cedar Point, obviously, and uh, it is just head-poundingly horrible. Um, I've only ever ridden it twice because I couldn't handle anything more than that. I slammed my head into the restraints a lot. Um, when I went over that first drop, um, I just like got whiplash, it felt like. And so I do respect the history of this coaster, and I understand how important it is to the coaster community and um, to coasters today. However, uh, it just does not hold up very well, and the ride isn't fun. So that's why it comes in at number five. So I know number four will be a popular opinion. It's Predator at Six Flags Darien Lake or just Darien Lake, however you want to call it. Um, yeah, I rode Predator this summer and it was very, very rough, very rattly. And I didn't think it provided a whole lot of airtime. Um, my buddies Bennett and Justin went there uh, a little bit after me and said that they did think it was a very good ride and they enjoyed it. However, I rode somewhere in the middle. Maybe I got a really bad ride on it or it was a bad day, but um, I had a headache from afterwards and um, I really think that this coaster has a good layout for an RMC as well. So I think that RMC should get their hands on this. Um, but yeah, I just did not enjoy my experience on Predator. I thought it was too rough. Um, typically I don't think coasters are rough too often, but this one was something else. Um, even with those old voyage trains, I was nostalgic for that because I used to ride those in my home park, but man, I could not handle predator. So that's why it comes in at number four. All right. We're finally getting to some of the worst of the worst. We have number three, Vacoma SLCs. Now I know these are generally hated in the coaster community and I probably don't have to say too much about their experiences to explain why I don't like them and why they come in at number three. Um, however, I will say the only saving grace of SLCs for me at this point is um, T3 at Kentucky Kingdom because even though uh, those restraints can crush your thighs, having no over-the-shoulder harness um, is a very, very good thing and it does help because the layout of the SLC isn't horrible. It's just how they're made is just pretty bad. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it that's why SLCs come in at number three. I know Maurice Piers has Nor'easter, which is said to be good, but I haven't ridden that. So SLCs are at number three. At this point, you're probably thinking, what could be worse than a Vacoma SLC? And here I'll tell you. Coming in at number two, we have Time Warp at Canada's Wonderland, or pretty much any Zamperla Volare, I assume. It is the only one I have ridden, so I am pointing out this one in particular. But oh my gosh, what a horrible, horrible coaster. First off, it takes the flying idea, the flying coaster idea, and just makes it really bad because who, like, why would you want to lay down on a hard piece of plastic and fiberglass 
to ride a coaster. I don't really know why you would want to do that um, at all. Then once your head is in there, you're kind of just stuck in between the two uh, bars beside your head, and there is no escape from head banging on this thing. Um, it is the worst. The transitions are also really bad. It just whips you around and makes you regret ever getting on the thing. Um, and I could see how it would also make you feel sick to your stomach because it really pushes down on your stomach as well. The instant I came off this coaster, I grabbed ibuprofen and chugged some water because I knew that, oh man, it just roasted my head. So I really do not like time warp. Um, I am, will be willing to ride more, um, Zimpelo Volares in the future just to get the credits, but I doubt I'll go beyond that with liking them. So that's why... Volares come in at number two. So last and certainly least is Goliath at Six Flags New England. And man, I really just do not like this coaster at all. Um, I understand that it was probably pretty good at Six Flags Magic Mountain as Deja Vu. And I've also heard the one at uh, Silverwood's pretty good. But um, when they move this to New England and put those premier trains on here, they absolutely ruin the ride. I didn't ride it before, and I haven't ridden any other giant inverted boomerangs, but um, th I hope that they are better than this one because this one is so, so bad. It It's rough. It there's like It's like beyond rough. It's like a different experience. You slam your head back and forth. My mom actually got a concussion while riding this. So uh, needless to say, it is the worst coaster I have ever ridden. I'm not saying this goes for all inverted boomerangs either because I haven't ridden any others. I need to give them a chance with the normal Vacoma trains. But um, yeah, that comes in for number one as my least favorite coaster of all time. So that concludes my top 10 worst roller coasters of all time. Um, I hope that I didn't make anybody too angry by putting a coaster on here that they disagree with. But like I said at the beginning, uh, please go out, uh, ride coasters and make your own opinions on what you think are the best and worst and what are your favorites and least favorites. Typically, I try to be positive about most of my coaster experiences, but sometimes it's just the worst experience you could have on a coaster and um, some coaster has to be last you know there's a first and there's a last there's got to be some sort of ranking so this just happens to be mine so most of the footage in this video is mine but please go check out a couple of people that I'll link down below that I borrowed their footage um, I want to thank them for that and um, yeah so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you leave a big fat thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching Thank you.